Hi, my name is Joe Fox and I'm from the team at E-Yachts. Today I'm on board the Axopar 37 Cross Cabin. This is the current flagship of the Axopar range. This is an incredible boat. It's been very popular since its initial introduction to Australia at the beginning of 2020. I'm going to show you on board today some of the features and the options that this boat has and show you over the boat in a little more detail to answer any queries and questions that you have. So the Axopar 37 is now in its second generation. With over 380 individual changes to the design of the boat since the first generation model, this Axopar 37 really is a step up from what we saw in the first place was a very successful boat. From a distance to the untrained eye, it still looks like an Axopar. It's still very true to the DNA of Axopar. But what we have done is tweak every single design aspect of the boat just to make it more ergonomic more user-friendly and more efficient. Some of those key features include changes to the hull design. So using the ideology from the first generation boat, Axopar threw out the plans and redesigned the hull, completely new mould, 10% faster and 10% more efficient with the same engines they were using before. Other features include large changes to the cabin top and the design of the windows as well as the deck mouldings, eliminating unwanted joins in the deck and making a very clean, easy to manage and easy to maintain boat. Starting at the bow or the front of the boat. Um, up here we've got a very nice lounging slash social area. Now there are a number of options that you can do here at the front. This is the standard setup that we have here. In the deck just in front of me there is a mount for a single legged table. Now just forwards of that table is another cushion on the anchor hatch, dining for kind of four. There is also the option to have a sun awning which comes out from the front of the cabin top on two poles inside the anchor hatch. See we have an electric winch here with 30 meters of chain attached to a nice ultra stainless steel anchor. This is on a self-launching system so as soon as you press the down button on the anchor winch from the helm station the anchor launches itself. It's not like you need to come and kick it over the edge like you do on some boats. As well as the remote control for the anchor there is a hardwired windlass remote here so you know if you don't have the remote the remote's gone missing you do have a redundancy here. Circuit breaker just next to it for the anchor winch is also very conveniently located so if this does overload and trip the switch you can just reset very simply. Also in this locker plenty of storage space so we've got like I said the table here stored inside here um, we've got some lines we've got the shore power lead plenty of space for fenders as well. There's also, also the shore power socket. Now the anchor remote that you use from the helm station is a wireless remote. It's on a lanyard so you can carry it around the boat. So if you would like to drop the anchor from the bow, say you've parked the boat up, you're in position and you would like to drop the anchor from the bow, it's a case of activating and releasing the chain. Now you also have control over the bow of the boat in that you have a bow thruster remote on here as well. So while you are away from the helm station and the controls, you can control the sideways motion of the bow of the boat. This is also really helpful for when you're lifting the anchor. So we have bow thruster controls here as well. Water filler is also conveniently located just underneath the anchor hatch, out of sight, keeping the deck nice and clean. But it's in a very convenient spot when you need it. Something that has become quite an iconic sight on this new Axopar 37 Revolution is the gullwing doors. Now these are the front section of the glass here with hinges in here and they fold upwards on either side. Now this model doesn't have them fitted but you can see in the footage now that it creates a very nice flow to the cabin below. Lots of light, lots of air as well as looking just very cool as a, as a feature on this model. So the cabin top has been redesigned. Um, the mould has been flipped upside down. Um, which allows for a, an inbuilt and hidden gutter system, collecting all the water, draining it to neat drain points. But what this also does is it gives me a handhold. So, you know, I've got a rail here heading down the side of the boat if it's moving around offshore. I've also got a rail here, so I've got very good security and I feel very safe moving down. The rails 
as on all the Axopars, are nice and high. And this is something on the new generation of boats that Axopar have done. They've lifted that rail to give you a bit more security as you're heading down the side. Here we also have the inbuilt gunnel step for getting on and off up to a quay onto another boat and you're parked next to a larger boat. It's very simple and convenient stepping system for boarding off the side of the boat. Moving further aft, we come to the stern area of the boat. Now, this is one of the most configurable parts on an Axopar 37. So just aft of the cabin, on this boat we have a wet bar. Now this contains quite a few features integral to enjoying a day out on the boat. So over here on the left or port side, we have a freshwater sink. This is connected to the 100 litre freshwater tank. In the center of the wet bar here, there is a nice large fridge. I'd say this is about 50 or 60 liters. On the right or starboard side of the wet bar, um, we have a useful blank spot for food prep. This can also be optioned with a, a nice large bin, as well as a gas grill or barbecue. Underneath the wet bar, plenty of storage. Uh, there's gas bottle provision in there as well. Very nice grab rail along here as well. So, you know, if you are doing food prep and you're serving people and you know another boat does go past you've got plenty of stuff to hold on to as well as the rod holders up here. Now it's worth saying at this point as well that on this model the headroom here is incredibly good so I'm just over six foot and I have no problem standing underneath here whereas on previous models it came down a little bit lower. Now the wet bar is not the only option that you can have. You can opt with nothing. This means that the cabin just comes down vertical to the deck. This gives you a bit more space, but you lose that functionality of the wet bar with the fridge and the sink and the extra storage. So we don't see that chosen a lot. There is an option also for a bench seat. So imagine this wet bar, but half the height with a nice cushion on it and storage underneath. That's a popular option for those people who are maybe using this as more of a fishing boat or a, uh, a dive boat. You know, it gives you somewhere nice to sit um, for getting on your gear or sitting during the day when you're not catching any fish. The fourth option is a aft cabin. Now this is sleeping for two people. Now this also gives you a sun lounger on top. It is a very nice, uh, comfortable cabin if you'd want to sleep, maybe two adults and two kids on the boat overnight. The fifth and final option is a multi-storage compartment. Now this takes up around the same area, the same footprint as the aft cabin. It comes out to about here. It's got the sun lounger on top, but it's about half the height of the aft cabins. So what this gives you is really nice storage. Uh, great for sea biscuits, toy box essentially. In this configuration and with the wet bar and the bench, we have access to plenty of storage underneath the deck. Now this runs quite a long way forward. Maybe goes another meter further forward. We also have fitted to this model the three aft seats. It's good if you want to get more people seated close to the wet bar or at low speed out the back of the boat. These seats are very simple. They are removable, so you don't have to have them installed on the boat at all times. As well as the seats on the stern of the boat here, we can also put a ski pole. Visibility from inside, from the driver's seat and potentially from the spotter's seat is very good from inside the cabin. This ski pole goes over the engines with a fixing point just about here, obviously matching the trim, be it the black Brabus line trim that we have here or the stainless standard trim. These engines that we have here are the twin 350 inline six Mercury engines. Now these are the biggest engines that you can put on this model. Uh, other options include um, the standard engines, which are 250 horsepower V8s, giving you a total of 500 horsepower or the 300 horsepower V8s, giving you a total of 600 horsepower. So between those three engine configurations, you have quite a lot of choice in terms of maximum power, maximum speed, maximum efficiency um, for whatever your uses on the boat are. Over this side and standard on all Axopars is of course the boarding ladder, which we can't see from when we're on the boat, but reaching over the side for deployment or if you jump in and forget to put it in you can easily deploy to climb back out of the water. Flagpole on the back here ever important for a bit of national pride as well as the ever important fender storage. Now this is the same on both sides but there are a few different options so you can option one of these as a cooler not a powered cooler but an esky type uh, cool box which means that the box is insulated there is a drain in the bottom on both sides um, so you can load it up with three or four bags of ice, a couple of bottles of champagne, and maybe a rosé if you fancy. 
In this configuration, we just have fender storage, line storage, as well as the elusive stern shower. As I said earlier, connected to that 100 litre freshwater tank on the same side as the boarding ladder. Really convenient for those rinsing off as they come out of the ocean after their swim. But this can be optioned as a live well or a live bait tank. Um, this features a glass front here with a powered pump to pump salt water into there. There's a light in there. It's a waterproof box with a drain in the bottom. So if you are into your fishing, you can option rod holders across the back, a bait tank here and a barbecue to cook it all on. We have the rod holder option uh, from Axopar. Six rod holders evenly spaced across the back in a rocket launcher style system. Um, they're up, they're out of the way. Uh, great for rod storage when you're either trawling at low speed or for storage um, underway at all, all kinds of speeds. Now we'll take you forward and into the pilot house cabin. Now on this new second generation Axopar, this is one of the features that they've really put a lot of work into. Now you'll notice the doors on either side are very wide. Now this is probably kind of a meter through here. Um, and what this allows you to do, with both of them open, it really opens up the whole of this cabin to make it feel like an open boat. And if we combine that with the sunroof, which I'm opening now from a button on the dash, we really get a crossover. And that's really where the, the name of the cross cabin uh, has come from. You have this incredible ability to feel like you're in an open boat. If I come in, I've got nothing above me, nothing on my right and nothing on my left. So it feels very open, but at the end of the day, when it's not like today with sun and blue sky, when that southerly kicks in and that rain squall comes over, you can close the boat up completely and it's completely watertight and you can get home in relative comfort. On the top of the roof, just up here, we have two roof racks. These are very solid. Uh, we've put bikes, um, sea kayaks on them. We've, we've had everything on them and it makes the boat feel really, you know, like an SUV of the water. This dash that we have here is incredibly ergonomic and clean. You'll notice not a lot of clutter. Where they've minimized the clutter, they've just got rid of it. So across the top here, we have the Simrad information display. This is a new product from Simrad. It features a glass touch sensitive screen with two Go 12, 12 inch plotters underneath. So they've got rid of all buttons and it's simply a case of using it much like a touch screen. This has full functionality. So whether you've got echo sounders, fish finders, radar, all the gadgets that you can add to a Simrad system, this has those features, all lights across the, uh, the left-hand side here. Across here and in front of the wheel is more of the operational side. The bow thruster control, very simple joystick, left and right position. This is controlled also from the bow thruster remote. Just below the bow thruster, we have our trim tabs on the stern of the boat. Now this, like all axopars and boats in general, controls the ride and roll motion of the boat. So if you are driving into a little bit of chop, um, a little bit of surface chop and the boat is slamming a bit, you can, much like a joystick on an aeroplane, just trim the bow down slightly to give that sharp V nose a little bit more drive and to make the ride a bit smoother. Also, if you're being blown by the wind, um, or unevenly loaded. If you've got five people sitting down one side of the boat at speed, you can control the roll of the boat to get the boat to sit level, makes it safer and ultimately more efficient as well. This model is fitted with the Brabus Line trim package. This trim package is a myriad of features on board the boat which raise the image and the spec of the boat. One of the main features is a leatherette steering wheel. You'll see the Brabus logo in the middle here. All the standard stainless detailing is in the black Brabus line powder coated finish. So everything from the side railings to the roof racks to the light tower on the back of the cabin top, the fishing rod holders, the ski pole, even the cleats are all in a matte black finish uh, to bring the boat in line with that black Brabus look. Also the fender, the bumper strip down the side is black on a Brabus line compared to the standard light gray on a standard line Axopar. Little details as well in the finishing of the boat. So you'll notice the seats have Brabus logos in them. In terms of the steering wheel, as with all Axopars, it is adjustable and the seats can slide forward and aft with your pop-up bolster. So for longer passages, you might be sitting on the seat with the bolster down 
You have a convenient footrest down here to put your feet on so your feet aren't dangling off the bottom and it is a very comfortable drive. The seat does slide further forward should you need it. Down this right hand side here of the control panel we have the twin uh, Mercury uh, engine throttles. These are a fairly standard setup however you can run them using one lever so if you are doing an offshore passage you don't want to have to keep these two levers close together you can press one lever and use one lever to control both the engines. This also has a sync function so in terms of optimizing efficiency on board it digitally matches the RPM when you're cruising so for maneuvering in a marina you split the sticks the engines operate independently. If you join the sticks and you're maneuvering at high speed then it'll digitally match the engine RPM just to give the boat that perfect balance at speed. As a standard on all Axopars is the waterproof USB charger. We also have a Simrad VHS here. The speaker for this is, a, is an externally mounted speaker just here. So just underneath the helm station we have a useful pocket here. There is a little step here now this is useful if you're if you know if you're letting the kids have a drive or if you just need a bit of height uh, when you are maneuvering the boat for greater visibility also in here and very important on all boats is access to the top of the fuel tank now this is a 700 liter fuel tank plenty of fuel in there it is petrol of course um, and we have two stop valves so one for each engine we can shut the supply from the engine here this is very close to the helm position so in an emergency you've got your VHF you've got your fuel shut off you've got everything you need including fire extinguisher it's all to hand one final piece of gear that we have under here is the battery isolators now these aren't the main switches for the batteries these are simply uh, relay switches for the main battery isolator switches but these are in a very convenient position as on all the Axopar 37s it's now an option on the Axopar 28 as well but you can activate the boat and bring it to life from the helm station very useful the overall helm position on this model is in a very useful position so the wheel is offset completely to starboard now what this means is that you're very close to the rail here so you know we've got a midships cleat here very accessible so if I'm parking the boat on my own or if I'm short-handed it's very easy to get a line onto this cleat also importantly I have the fuel filler cap here so I could pull into a fuel dock put a breast line on and fuel the boat up all without leaving this kind of area it makes a really simple and easy to manage vessel um, when it comes to either being a skipper or taking the family on a day out now moving to the aft end of the cabin we obviously have seating and storage and a great table but just before I head there I'll turn this seat around now these seats are nice and solid what this enables you to do is when you come to the aft end of the cabin here and fold this table out you have quite a large dining option so if I was to turn the driver's seat around as well we'd have one two three four five maybe six people inside the cabin protected out of the wind if it is a windy day so underneath all the seating at the back of the pilot house here we have storage now on this model we have the wet bar on the back so under this whole bench is just simply storage now if I lift this up, this seat clips up so it stays well out the way. You can see we've got, you know, a few spare fenders. We've got a few covers in here. If you have the aft cabin, you have to bear in mind that this is your main access to that cabin. Also under the L-shaped bench on the starboard side of the cabin, there is more storage. Down the port side of the cabin here, we have bottle storage, um, cup storage, we also have a nice feature in the doors so there's actually storage for be it charts magazines navigation books whatever you want inset into the finish of the door they put a, a silver text insert into there so it really looks the part it really gives it that that luxury feel that you'd expect in a in a boat of this caliber now underneath the co-pilot seat here we have the standard fridge which comes as standard on the base boat for all boats coming into australia Great fridge location, very accessible from both the helm seat and the passenger seats at the back. Our main access into the front cabin is through the dash here. So this very clever door 
hinges up on a nice strong gas strut, so it is very solid. This sliding door opens, and that's our access through. Now the first thing we come to in here is the enclosed head. Standard option is the head underneath a seat in main cabin, um, but what this option does, it just gives a bit more privacy uh, for anyone who, who would like to use the head. So as I go in, you'll see it's got plenty of lighting. I've got light coming through the opaque separation here as well as any light coming through from the hatch that's open. Now, if I want my complete privacy, I simply close the two sections that I just opened. I've also got a little sink in here. We have the 12 volt switchboard and fuse board. There's a mirror, makes it feel larger, as well as you know being able to make sure that all my hairspray is still intact. Carbon monoxide alarms, a few vents down here just to keep the air flowing. There is the option to have an internal shower, and this is situated just opposite me on the port side of the toilet compartment. This is, when you order it, it comes behind a screen. So it's a case of opening it up and then you use the shower in a seated position here. This door doubles up as either a privacy screen in this configuration for the toilet or it completely blocks off the toilet. So you wouldn't even know it was there as you come through to the aft cabin. Through here, we have the fairly typical bow cabin of the Axapar 37. Now on this model we have to bear in mind we don't have the gullwing doors but you can see where they would be. So you can see the crease in the gel coat here. So this whole door on either side can open up for very easy access or ventilation. Just after that we have a seat on either side. So quite a comfortable seat you know if you're if you're sitting down here reading a book you've got a gullwing door open you've got plenty of air quite a nice place to be out of the heat out of the sun with a little bit of natural air conditioning going on on this model we don't have the gullwing doors um, but what we do have here and as a standard is a opening hatch um, this lets an ever important airflow in if you are spending the night in here. In terms of the sizing in here, you know, it is perfectly comfortable. I've got full sitting headroom here, so I'd have no problem getting changed, be it out of wet weather gear or, you know, dressed at the beginning of the day. Um, and in terms of the bunk, it is, you know, a pleasant size. I, I could very easily stretch out quite far on here. Um, plenty of ventilation falling in here down onto my head, very comfortable night. Access through the gullwing doors is aided by these two drop down steps here on either side. These lift up, so it just gives you a little bit more space when you're spending the night. Most of the time these will be down. And that's step one, step two, and then out through the gullwing door. We also have a fusion radio remote control down here. Two speakers just over here, so that we can listen to our favorite tunes. So that wraps up our walkthrough of this Axapar 37 cross cabin. As you can see, a very intuitive design, a great improvement on what was already a very successful model from Axopar. We're gonna take the boat for a little bit of a run now so that you can see how she goes through the water. Hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. If you would like more information, please get in touch with myself or the team at E-Yachts and we'd be happy to help you out. If you did enjoy this video, do give us a like and a subscribe. Um, to be alerted to more content as we release it on these impressive boats from Axapar Boats in Finland.